This is how code enforcement officers and police look like to me. A very intimidating hat, silly sunglasses, a real stern, mean, ugly, pathetic demeanor. Now, you could call me paranoid, but I'm not. The intent of police officers, the police officers union, the city council is to invoke fear into people's lives as if that would somehow elicit respect. It elicits respect, but it's a false sense of respect and it won't sustain us as a country as a people, as a society, as a city, as a family, as a partnership. Fear is exactly the thing that needs to be addressed in Palm Springs, California. I have been battered by a particular gentleman who I will keep anonymous simply because I do know him to be a human being and I do know that without the uniform, without the poor training, without the big paycheck, without the reputation of the city, he actually is a decent human being. Just like I am, just like the Marine that was killed, just like my friend Rihanna's husband who was killed in Victorville in January, just like my friend Carol, a Hollywood illustrator who was brutally attacked and robbed by a gentleman, and that's being polite but inaccurate, a sheriff in the state of California that killed her dogs in front of her to evoke fear. Fear is ridiculous. It means nothing. It's a false idea. It's a ridiculous way to control people. It doesn't control people at all. It just makes them angry or upset or hurt or sad. And those sorts of emotions create an environment where no one can pursue happiness, which is our constitutional guarantee. Now, if the officer who battered me and the officer who killed a Marine and the officer who brutally attacked my friend Carol and the officer who shot Michael Brown and Ferguson, and the list goes on and on and on. Think for a minute that fear serves them any more than it serves the people they're trying to control. They're patently wrong. Fear will eat you up inside. Fear will destroy you. Fear is the basis to acidify the soul and the constitution, so much so that cancer will set in. It doesn't really matter if it's a physical cancer in your breasts, or in your testicles, or in your throat or your lungs, or in your heart, or in your soul, or in your ideas. Fear is despicable. That's the bad news. The good news, fear is unreal. You can remain fearless the rest of your life quite easily. Simply align yourself with the idea that love is all pervasive and all around you 
and that's the true reality. Now those that would invoke fear or react to fear scoff at such a notion as love. How's that working for you? Miserable, bitter, encumbered by duties that you don't want to do anymore or never did in the first place. Defending ideas and concepts that are indefensible. There's two choices in life, really. Two choices. You can either create problems or you can solve problems. And fear will always create more problems. And fear very, very rarely will solve a problem. And if it does, it's not sustaining or long-lasting. So, what's the alternative? Corny as it sounds, idealistic as it sounds, the antidote to fear, the choice, is to love. It's to care. It's to be concerned. It's to have compassion for all human beings on this planet. This country does not codify apartheid. This country is systematically instituting apartheid every day and it has since its inception. We create an apartheid by having a passport. I can travel almost anywhere in the world with a U.S. passport and my government will come and rescue me if I have Ebola virus in Liberia or if I'm a journalist in the Middle East. My country will spend millions, perhaps billions of dollars in order that I might come home safe, secure, and happy. That's a lot of love that a country would do that for you if you have a U.S. passport. If you don't have a U.S. passport, you're systematically ignored, brutalized, perhaps even killed. So this country sets itself up to be the greatest country in the world. But it is only the greatest country in the world if you have a U.S. passport. That's apartheid. One of the reasons why we supposedly go fight wars in other countries or that we would fight countries that would oppose us for whatever reason is so that we can be victorious. and bring forward the idea that all people are created equal. Everyone deserves a fair share of the pie, at least the opportunity to pursue it. That's the reason soldiers are given and cops are given to enforce the peace. The reality is something quite different. And I don't need to review every headline of every day of the week, every week of the year, and every year of my lifetime to convince you that this country cares in a very selective way, white, Christian, male, Let's throw some females in there. Let's throw some children in there. And let's let the blacks have their share. Maybe another 20 years, we'll let the Hispanics have their share. Maybe, maybe not. The problem is this country views itself as a superior nation built on an apartheid structure that if you don't meet 
superimposed requirements that are arbitrarily determined, you're nobody. You mean nothing, you're disposable, and the reality is the U.S. government does not care. The local police department does not care. We're a nation of liars. We're a nation of schizophrenics. We're a nation of hypocrites. And we're a nation built on fear from the very inception of circling the wagons, of hating Indians so much that we would steal their land away, rob them of their dignity, lie, cheat, and steal with things called treaties only to wipe them away in a matter of a couple of generations to do it all over again. It's exactly what we're doing in the Middle East. We go into tribal areas and drone the hell out of them to get them to submit to our way of life, which sadly is built on fear. So the next time you put on your uniform, and the next time you touch your gun, and the next time you put your finger on the trigger and you pull it, I want you to think about something. Is that the most loving thing you can do? Or is it built around fear for yourself? A very selfish, conceited, arrogant, act that you're more important than anybody else in the world. Now I don't mind if you want to wear an NRA cap and defend yourself as an individual and a private individual. That doesn't bother me at all. You have a right to do that. But if you want to engage my government and you want to spend my taxpayer money I think I have a right to say something as in that's enough now the problem is you're not allowed to be fear based and act selfishly in the commission of your public duties to me. I won't have it. A public servant is fearless. A public servant serves people first. A public servant would die before he would even consider taking somebody else's life. A public servant would consider that every human being they come across is innocent until proven guilty. And even a criminal has human rights that are inalienable. And you must serve the criminal, the heretic, the atheist the spoiled, rotten hippie, the fat homosexual before yourself. If you work in any capacity in which you're a government employee or contractor, that's your job. If you don't like it, quit your job and go work for the private sector. Then you can wear this hat, maybe even these sunglasses, arm yourself to the tits, and defend your right to exist with the rest of us. That's your prerogative, that's your choice. I'm not going to stand in your way. Who would? But if you work for my government, 
if you're a police officer for my city, if you're a soldier fighting for my country, would you please wake up and get a clue? You're not allowed. It's not in your job description to be fearful. It's not your job to use fear as an excuse to execute other Americans. Once we clean up our act here in America, then maybe we can take the message to other countries that we are a loving people, that we are a caring people, that we always put other people first before ourselves. No matter what their state, their mental capacity, their past histories, their appearance, their socioeconomic state, their national background, or their religion, it doesn't matter. You always come first. Doesn't matter if you're in East Timor, or the Gaza Strip, Tel Aviv, Moscow, North Korea, South Africa, Brazil, Peru, Australia, it doesn't matter. If Americans are the greatest people in the world and they are the most giving and loving people in the world, then all other nations and people come first. Then we would have a right to be leaders of the free world. And I should like to remind Police Chief Franz, Mayor of Palm Springs, Steve, as I call him, President Obama, Eric Holder, Peter King, Ron Wyden, Diane Feinstein, Lindsey Graham, Ron Paul, Paul Ryan, Sarah Palin. If you expect to serve the public, then please serve the public. Your job is to be a public servant. You're following people that you serve. That's a true sign of a leader. All you have to do is look at Gandhi and Mandela, Malala, the little girl that was shot and survived. If you start looking at the people that are leaders in the world, they are first and foremost and always have been public servants and not so much commanders in chief. This country is at war with itself. This country believes in some sectors of society that by brute force and control and fear, we can run the world. That's a fascist notion. That's a totalitarian methodology. That's what tyrants do. And I've had enough of it. I'm not going to arm myself. I'm not going to ever buy a gun. I'll try not to speak too harshly too often to too many people. But I will freely say whatever I want whenever I feel like I need to to remind people that love is all there is at the end of the day and that fear is meaningless. Fear is stupid. Fear is ignorance. And fear is a complete and utter waste of time. If you live in fear, my heart goes out to you. By my example, 
perhaps, maybe, hopefully, you'll become more fearless. Not in terms of a hubris or an arrogance, but as a condition and state of being as loving and accepting and tolerant as much as you possibly can. Because for every ounce of fear that you hold on to is one less ounce of love that could fill up your life. Am I mad? Not really. Am I sad? Not so much. Am I fearful? Absolutely not. Why am I fearless? Choice. I make the choice constantly and continually to be fearless. With enough practice, it's not work. It's just second nature. It's like breathing or seeing or hearing. It's not about wanting to even control anybody. It's not about wanting to be right or be the best. It's simply wanting to live life to the fullest. Any ounce of fear in your heart, in your mind's eye, in your breast, in your testicles, in your toes, harms you more than anybody else. And that you would dare to bring forward and express that fear into your daily lives as a government employee is unconscionable. As you spend your life in fear, get out of government and get busy. Go create a job for yourself. Go work in an industry that supports you being compromised by your fear. Get some support. 